It's the eighth day of our first cruise on our new narrowboat. We picked her up in Stoke-on-Trent and we're making our way down the Trent and Mersey towards our winter mooring on the Oxford Canal. We moored overnight in a village called Salt and we're straight on the move the next morning. I had planned a rough itinerary for this journey to take about two weeks and we are way behind where we should have been at this point. We're halfway through our journey in days and we're about one tenth of the way in miles. We are literally half an hour away by car from where we started which is so funny. I've lived a whole life out here on these waterways in the last week. I'm a different person now but geographically we're 17 miles away from where we started. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you'll know that I love to worry, so of course I was getting really stressed out about this. We had to get back to our flat to finish packing everything up and we needed to drop off our boat at our winter mooring. If we didn't get there soon, it would get stuck on the wrong part of the canal and all of this was a genuine practical reason that we had to hurry up. But I think there was also a bit of an adjustment period in general. We were going from living on basically a main road in North London to mooring in small villages and spending all this time in the countryside. Sometimes when you're cruising through fields on either side, you're the only people as far as you can see in any direction. I haven't had that for years. We were talking about how quiet it was compared to our flat because we were used to hearing sirens and traffic constantly. We didn't even realise how much it made up the background noise of our lives until it was gone and it was so quiet. So I think I was also feeling under pressure to stick to this self-imposed schedule because we were just used to rushing around. Neither of us had had a holiday in years, we were always working and I was always worrying. So this new leisurely pace was so different to how we'd been living until now. And we'd had such a nice time stopping wherever we fancied and looking around at all the places, staying over for a couple of days when we liked to mooring. There was so much to learn about the boat and how to live on a boat in general. This is my first time on a boat. I was still really worried that we'd float away while we were in our sleep or something. So it was just a big learning curve, a lot going on. Boating is not a high speed sport and I think slowly is definitely the way to do it. The whole point is to enjoy the journey. You can't really physically go any faster on an aeroboat than we're actually going. When you pass moored boats you have to slow right down and speeding along is also bad for the wildlife. It roads the banks of the canal so it's just a case of doing more hours each day and we'll get there eventually. so lucky with the weather for this part of the journey it was so warm and sunny for this time of year nature was doing its thing everything just looked like a painting it was incredible
So after I said we were going to start concentrating on making the miles and diligently driving, we immediately had to stop because we came up to Great Haywood, which has a farm shop and a cafe, and I'd heard great things about both. Never been to a farm shop I haven't liked, so I wasn't about to miss out on cripplingly expensive local organic produce just because we were technically in a rush. And apparently they had amazing donuts, so we quickly moored up. It was the most beautiful day. We have to come back here because this part of the canal was so pretty and just such a nice place to moor. The farm shop was amazing. They have a butcher's supplied by local farms and an in-house bakery, loads of local produce and then also the bougie farmer shop type brands, you know the stuff. When we went, the farm was doing a pick your own pumpkin thing. Throughout the year, they do various different things. In the summer, it's strawberries and raspberries. So I definitely would like to come back for that. Farmer shop hall. Got milk, got some sausages, local. Got some butter, I think less local on the butter, but still good. Got some donuts made in the farm shop cafe. Got some sausage rolls for the journey. And, uh, some beans to have a nice breakfast later. Lots of people on the internet have been worried about you, Matilda. Do you have a comment to make? Do you have a statement you'd like to make to the people? Anything to say? No. That's the end of the press conference. Thank you, good afternoon. Here I did a lock and then another boater actually told me, oh, do you want to jump over my boat to get back onto yours? Because there's not really anywhere on the bank for him to pull up the boat. 
and I was like oh no it's fine no worries which was really stupid because he obviously knew what he was talking about because there wasn't anywhere for Andrew to pull up the boat and for me to get back on so I was just trotting along the towpath alongside the boat for like half an hour which was really funny but lesson learnt listen to advice of fellow boaters but eventually I did manage to get back on and we cruised on towards Rougely to hopefully find our mooring for the night. Just before Rougely there was an aqueduct which takes the canal over the river and then there was this full on 90 degree angle turn which was a bit hairy and we of course met another boat at the worst possible time but it was fine and luckily we found a mooring without any problems because it was starting to get pretty dark and this time of year it just gets dark so early it made it really hard to get the hours in cruising. I really love this mooring. All the houses have gardens backing onto the canal and everyone has these really cool different gardens that you can have a really good nosy at. I love how people express their personality in their gardens. It's fascinating. It's one of my favorite things about cruising. Just have a good look at everyone's gardens as you go by. I love it.
the next morning it was time to set off again for the final leg of our journey. We still had a few days to go and a lot of miles to cover, but I was starting to get into the rhythm of it, to just enjoy the slow pace, look around and appreciate how special it is to be able to see these places from this vantage point and how lucky we are that we get to do this. What's the point of wasting time worrying when you can look at a moorhen in its nest? Exactly. Exactly.